For the first time since Dave Limp strapped on the CEO crown at Blue Origin, Dave Limp is out there vowing to move heaven and earth to slam American boots back on the lunar surface before China does it first. It's a bold flex, the kind that sounds great on paper, especially with NASA scrambling to shave years off the Artemis timeline. But here's the kicker. While Limp's team is pitching moonshot miracles, their flagship New Glenn rocket, again, just missed a NASA Mars probe launch, leaving everyone asking when this heavy lifter will actually lift anything heavier than excuses. Meanwhile, over at SpaceX, Elon Musk's crew is treating criticism like rocket fuel, cranking out Starship milestones, faster than you can say FAA exemption. This isn't just a scheduling hiccup. It's the latest salvo in the grudge match between two billionaire-backed titans, where one promises the stars and the other delivers them mostly on fire. But hey, progress. Will Blue Origin's lunar hype evaporate like their launch windows, or can they finally outrun a thunderstorm? Strap in. The gap is wider than low Earth orbit. Losing the 2021 Artemis III HLS shootout to SpaceX with their Blue Moon pitch clearly left a bruise the size of the lunar South Pole. Ever since Jeff Bezos' rocket shop has been nursing a master plan to flip the board and crown itself NASA's only ace against China's crude landing. And right on cue, NASA just cracked the HLS door open again perfect timing after acting administrator Sean Duffy went full reality TV villain last month, torching SpaceX on CNBC for dragging feet on the $2.9 billion contract and threatening to let Blue Origin swing again. In a wide-ranging interview with Ars Technica on November 8, 2025, Limp didn't mince words or puns. We just want to help the U.S. get to the moon, he declared. If NASA wants to go quicker, we would move heaven and earth pun intended to try to get to the moon sooner. And I think we have some good ideas. Limp wasn't bluffing idly. Blue Origin fired off an initial summary of acceleration proposals to NASA, almost immediately after Duffy's call to arms with a full report due here shortly. Their pitch ditched the bloated timelines and lean into a sustainable architecture with fully reusable landers and in-space tankers. Specifically, they're tweaking the Blue Moon family, ramping up the Mark I cargo lander for quicker demos and evolving it into a Mark 1.5 variant that's less thirsty for orbital refueling. If Blue Origin pulls this off, they could flip the script on the 2021 snub, proving Blue Moon isn't just a consolation prize, but the sustainable workhorse NASA needs for lunar bases and beyond. But is there a but vows are cheap when your rocket can't even clear the launch pad on time. Just a few days after Limp's heaven-moving rhetoric, Blue Origin's new Glenn faced a reality check that exposed the chasm between ambition and execution. The new Glenn 2 mission slated to hurl NASA's twin escapade probes toward the Red Planet was scrubbed on November 9th amid a cocktail of thunderstorms rain, a few minor problems with launch pad equipment, and at least one cruise ship that strayed too close to the flight path. Blue Origin sets the next launch attempt for no earlier than Wednesday, November 12th, from 2.50 p.m. to 4.17 p.m. EST. They have received FAA approval for an exemption to its temporary commercial launch restrictions, paving the way for the upcoming New Glenn launch. This isn't deja vu, it's Groundhog Day. Escapade was also booted from its October 2024 sweet spot Mars window because New Glenn wasn't ready. That rocket's been simmering for over a decade with the expected first launch around 2020 didn't ignite until January 2025, five years late to its original plan. This second delay isn't some minor oopsie. It was a gut punch to NASA's first Mars mission in half a decade. Escapade Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers is a scrappy duo of half-ton orbiters built by Rocket Lab for under $80 million led by UC Berkeley whizzes like principal investigator Rob Lillis. 
their gig sniffing how solar wind strips away Mars's upper atmosphere, a key puzzle for future human outposts. Blue Origin pocketed about $20 million from NASA for the ride a bargain bin deal that accepted the risks of New Glenn's sophomore flight. For NASA, it's a bruise. For Jeff Bezos, a sucker punch to his orbital baby. He bragged that New Glenn would fly eight times in 2025. Reality check, New Glenn won in January nailed ascent, but botched the booster landing when BE-4s ghosted on relight. Nearly a year later, New Glenn 2 again had trouble getting off the ground. This November window was already a consolation prize after missing August. Odds are this, if it flies, will be the only other New Glenn launch this year. Operational readiness for Artemis cargo lunar missions. That's starting to sound like a punchline in a vacuum. Contrast that with the rocket-slinging chaos factory down in South Texas, where SpaceX is turning Duffy's barbs into booster fuel. Despite the acting admin's CNBC shade calling out timeline slips and dangling Blue Origin as a rival, Musk's machine didn't flinch. SpaceX is accelerating for the debut flight of Starship version 3 in early 2026. Flight 12, marking the debut of the dual S-39 and B-18, is on track, or at least that's what the Starbase rumor mill is whispering right now. At the time of editing, Ship 39's first section rolled out in mid-October, with additional sections arriving and being stacked in sequence, like some kind of stainless steel Jenga tower. The latest update shows the aft section, which includes the rear flaps being attached to the rest of the vehicle. The next steps include installing the engine skirt and mounting the flaps, followed by extensive system checks, including the fuel tank avionics and heat shield inspections. Given the current timeline, Ship 39 stacking could continue into mid-November. A rollout for cryogenic testing might occur by month's end, but static fire testing is unlikely before mid-December. After that, the ship would still need to undergo a final round of inspections, payload integration, and flight termination system installation tasks that would likely push its completion well into the new year. The Super Heavy booster, designated B-18, has yet to begin testing. Recent progress shows its forward section outfitted with an upgraded hot staging ring but it has not yet rolled to the pad. Once it does, B-18 will first undergo cryogenic testing at the Massey test site, which now includes a fully installed booster quick disconnect system. This test will mark the first demonstration of version 3's new hardware and ground integration systems. If the schedule holds, cryogenic testing could be completed by mid-November, followed by engine installation, toward the end of the month. Afterward, B-18 would move to Pad 2 for a static fire test, where it will ignite its full complement of engines for the first time. Upon completion, the booster will return to the Mega Bay for detailed inspection and final integration work. Block 3 is the workhorse version, the one built to haul the heavy stuff for NASA's moon return, including the insane tech of in-orbit refueling. It's the next evolution after Block 2, which already went through the full test, fly, fail, fix, fly again cycle in 2025 with five full-up integrated test flights. Flight 10 and Flight 11 absolute bangers. Not only did they survive, they nailed the objectives clearing the path for multiple live refueling demos in 2026 between two Block 3 starships in orbit. Now stop and think about that. No one has ever refueled a rocket in space at this scale. Not NASA. Not Russia. Not China. Nobody. SpaceX already pulled off the first baby step, transferring 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between two tanks on the same starship while in flight. That wasn't just cool footage that was hard science. They learned how cryofluid slosh in zero-g, how to stop boil-off, how to keep lines from freezing or rupturing, and how to make the whole thing leak-proof and repeatable. That data, it's not sitting in a drawer. It's already being welded into the next generation of tanker starships, the ones that'll top off lunar landers like gas station pumps in space. And, yeah, 
Blue Origins got their own refueling dream Blue Alchemist, this super cool idea to cook rocket fuel from moon dirt using solar power. It's legit futuristic. But here's the thing, it's still a PowerPoint slide with no flight date. They've got no orbital demos, no test articles in space, no timeline. Because New Glenn, the only rocket that could even get the gear up there, is still stuck on the ground, begging the FAA for a daytime launch waiver and praying the weather doesn't scrub again. In spaceflight, ideas don't win, races flight experience does. We also know that there are actually two paths that Starship development is going down right now. Path one is the core Starship system. That's what we've been watching launch and land and explode for the past two years. It has been very public. The second one is Starship HLS, which has been unfolding in secret until now. Not publicizing it raised a lot of eyebrows. People were starting to wonder, does SpaceX even want the moon anymore? As a way to shut down the rumors, SpaceX dropped a bombshell update on Starship HLS progress, basically flipping off the doubters with 49 milestones ticked off since 2022. That's NASA's $2. Nine billion at work doled out in chunks for everything from cabin mock-ups to Raptor cold start tests in cryogenic hell. They've built full-scale interiors for life support shakeouts with crews sweating through temp and humidity cycles. Drop tested the whole lander on fake regolith to tune those leggy feet. Partnered with Axiom on airlock elevator drills in pressurized suits that mirror the real deal. Even the fuel depot variant white painted like HLS to beat back solar bake is acing small scale cryo transfers prepping for the big league propellant handoffs no one's nailed before and the engine's raptors throttled down for lunar soft lands deep frozen, then reignited like it's no biggie. Micrometeoroid blasts on hull panels and windows under thermal extremes. Autonomous landing software crunching sensors radar and cams on flight computers. Robust comms for Earth check-ins plus a medical uplink for any mid-mission mishaps no doc on board remember. SpaceX cheekily notes most milestones hit early, or on the nose, all while self-funding the core Starship for Mars. This is also considered a way for Musk to fire back at Sean Duffy's criticism, who on October 20th decided that he's going to publicly call out SpaceX and threaten to cancel their moon landing contract on a CNBC television show called Squawk Box.